Nashville isn't a shy city. It announces itself with a blast of music spilling from honky-tonks, lining neon-drenched streets. The air throbs with the rhythm of a thousand guitars, the melodic cries of singers chasing stardom. The honky-tonks, shoulder to shoulder, boast names dripping with country music legend. The Tootsie Orchid Lounge, Robert's Western World, and the legendary Grand Ole Opry. A beacon for aspiring musicians. Beyond the honky-tonks, southern food joints tempt with the aroma of slow-cooked, smoked barbecue. Street performers belt out tunes, their voices competing with the honking taxis and the rhythmic clip-clop of horse-drawn carriages. The section of the city known as Lower Broad on any given night hosts tens of thousands of tourists and locals all out to have a few drinks, listen to some great live music, and above all else, have a good time. Walking down the sidewalk late on a Friday or Saturday night, you'll be shoulder to shoulder with people of all sorts. Beautiful people, dressed up to look their best while out on the dance floor. College students out with their fellow classmates, possibly looking for an overnight companion. Older folks in town just to take in the scenery and music. And of course, dozens of groups of women in town for a bachelorette party. Those have been given the title of Woo Girls by the locals. Towards the end of the night, the street gets darker, partially with dimming lights, but mostly with dimming moods. Arguments, extremely intoxicated people, and sometimes the occasional fist fight over something stupid are not out of the realm of possibility. If you're on Lower Broad, for the most part, aside from paying way too much for drinks, you're likely to have a great time. But there are times that even the most seemingly straight-laced person can get in over their head, either by over-consuming drinks or having something unwanted slipped into their beverage. And that's what may have happened about two weeks ago to someone who's now become a household name. Riley Strain. Welcome back to Music City 911. Riley Strain's Facebook profile doesn't have a lot of information on it. It shows that he went to Kickapoo High School in Springfield, Missouri. Is currently studying financial planning at the University of Missouri and on January 15th announced that Riley had just started work as a financial representative at Northwestern Mutual. Further information about him has been released, but not for a big achievement he's accomplished. The University of Missouri chapter of the Delta Chi fraternity had decided to have Nashville play host for its spring formal event. They made their way into the city and looked forward to a fun night out bar hopping down on Lower Broad on March 8th. Details are a bit sketchy as to when they started their evening, but when talking with his mother, Riley relayed that they had been out to Miranda Lambert's bar called Casa Rosa and were currently at Garth Brooks' new bar, the Low Places Bar and Honky Talk, when they were talking. From there, everyone went to Luke Bryan's place the Luke's 32 Bridge. It's also not known how many drinks Riley had total that night. When at Luke's 32, Riley was kicked out of the bar by security. In a statement released by Luke's 32, during Riley's visit to Luke's 32 Bridge, our records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters. At 9.35 p.m., our security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit at the front of our building. He was followed down the stairs with one member of his party. The individual with Riley did not exit and returned upstairs. From there, Riley left and started walking, presumably by his fraternity brothers, back to the hotel that they were staying at. But Riley did not return to the hotel that night. The next day, his frat brothers set out to find police to report Riley missing. They ended up at the steps of the Central Police Precinct here in Nashville. 
911, what is the address of your emergency? Hi, um, I don't have an address. Um, I'm trying to file a missing persons report, and the police, the central police uh, is closed, and the sheriff's office said that we couldn't do it there. Okay, so where exactly are you now? We're in front of the central police, uh, how do you say it? Precinct, precinct, how do you say that? Precinct. The Central okay. Police Precinct on... Okay, there, well, right, there. one Korean Veterans Boulevard and down yeah, 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 yeah. right across from the Music yeah. City Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and is that where you're able to wait for a police officer to come and speak to you? Yeah, we can wait for an officer here. Okay, what's the phone number you're calling from? Of my phone? Yes, in case we needed to reach you back, what is the best number to reach you at? And what is your name, sir? Brayden, B-R-A-Y-D-E-N. And your Balt, last name? B-A-L-T-Z. Okay. And who is it that you're wanting to report as missing? It's We're here on a fraternity formal trip. It's, it's one of my good buddies. Okay. What is his name? His name is Riley Strain. Riley... R I L E Y strain S T R A I N. Okay. Is he white, black, Hispanic, Asian? He's white. He's white, uh twenty two year old, six five blonde. Okay. And what was he last seen wearing? Outside of Luke Bryan's bar last night at like ten and then the last time his location on his phone was by the sheriff's office at like 11 p.m. Okay, and what color clothing was he last seen wearing? He's wearing jeans, boots, and a, bla a half black shirt, half brown, light brown. Okay, and you said it last showed outside the sheriff's department? Like around that area by the river, by the sheriff's department over there. Okay. Does he have any life sustaining medications or disabilities? No. And what is, you said he, he has a phone, so it's a cell phone, right? Yeah, it's an iPhone uh, 15 Pro Max. What is the number? But it, it's, um, hold on. Give me one second. I got you. Sure. Um, all right, are you ready? Yes, go ahead. Okay. You said the last four were forty one ninety eight? Yes. Okay. Um, and are you going to be waiting there at the, at the door of the precinct? Or are you going to be waiting in your car? I mean, yeah, we're at the front door of the precinct. Okay. I've got the call sent there at the Central Precinct, 601 Korean Veterans Boulevard in downtown, right across the Music City Center. We'll get an officer out to you as soon as we can. Please call us back if something changes before they arrive. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Okay. Like I say, just call us back if something changes before they arrive. That's fine. All right. We'll be Thank here. You. From the 911 call, the fraternity brother stated his phone's last location pinged somewhere around the sheriff's department. It's important to note that the Sheriff's Department location that was mentioned is actually the Metro Jail, which is run by the Sheriff's Department. Once police started taking information, the search for Riley began. Police began with his description, which it's noted that he is a white male, 22 years old. He is very tall at 6 foot 5 to 6 foot 6 and has a thin build weighing only 165 pounds. They also began trying to retrace its steps, going from business to business asking for any surveillance camera footage from that night. Security camera footage has been released, 
two of those from the downtown smoke and vape shop at 200 church street in the first video he is seen running or jogging on a sidewalk next to the premier parking lot at the corner of third and church then falling down possibly hitting his head with some of the theories floating around that he was being chased that could explain the running the problem with those theories is that no one was seen walking up from behind him he then stands up and starts walking and stumbling bouncing into walls of businesses close by he was on the south side of church street at this point headed eastbound he continued and another video was released from the corner of first and church street right where church street turns into a street called the gay street connector in this video he can be seen slowly walking and stopping a couple times crossing first avenue onto the gay street connector later police released body-worn camera video from an officer that was on the Gay Street Connector investigating a car break-in. Riley can be seen walking by the officer who turned to him and said a few words. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. <coughs> the officer was on the scene investigating the car break-in for around 45 minutes. He reported hearing no signs of distress or anything else while on the scene. As said before, Riley's last known cell phone location was around the jail, which is several hundred feet up the Gay Street Connector from where the officer was. This was also approximately the location of another piece of evidence that was found. Uh, I know she lives here right now. I can't remember where she was from here. But hey, she's right with me to go climb right down. I was like, my type of gal. No hesitation. I definitely would have I didn't know about you doing all that very well. <laughs> Look at her. She's got a stick. That's my pepper gal. Like, oh. Well, I know the homeless I saw up above, they would have like a couple spots, like old fire pits or something. Old spots they'd burn stuff to take them around and freeze them out like that. I don't think they do right here, or at least where that guy's tent is, because he's talking about how cold. What? Found you found his credit card? We could have found his credit card. We got to hang up. We got to hang up the phone. Oh, my God. That was audio from two TikTokers who were out searching for Riley on the side of the river. They found his credit card. They were doing a live stream on TikTok and had someone else on the video with them as they were searching. After stopping the live stream, they quickly contacted police who came to secure the card. It was investigated and found not to be used any time after leaving Luke's 32 bar. The area it was found in is a very dense area with trees, rocks, and a ton of trash that have both been washed up onto the banks as well as left by homeless people who camp on the side of the river. It's also a very steep area with a drop off from the Gay Street Connector to the river of anywhere from 20 to 40 feet, depending on where you try to get down to the river from the road. The only thing separating the road from this steep drop-off is either a rock wall or wooden fence, neither of them more than three feet tall. Something like that would be easy to fall over. Metro Police, along with Riley's parents, recently held a news conference to try to get facts straight, as well as answer questions people might have. I'm Detective Anthony Chandler. This is Sergeant Bob Nielsen. We're with the Homicide Cold Case Unit from Metro National Police, and we've been heading up the investigation into Riley's disappearance. As Mr. Flagg said, we've been in contact with him since the very beginning, coordinating what we could as far as with the family's active participation in locating Riley. That has been, and to this day, remains the top priority. There has not been any evidence that has come forward to change this to an ongoing criminal investigation at this time. 
regardless of what else has been put out there, there are several leads that we are following up with on a constant basis and an influx of information that is coming forward at all times. We are going through every single piece of that information, but the priority remains locating Riley. As he said, I'm Sergeant Nielsen. Uh, I gave a briefing to our chain of command all the way up to Chief Drake yesterday. Uh, they're well aware of where we are with the investigation at this point as, we're, as well as the resources. Uh, we do have our boat going back in the water this afternoon along with members of the urban search and rescue team that will be combing the area, researching the area. Um, it's been mentioned already today and it's also been asked, you know, things like why was that card found and why didn't we find it? As Mr. Flagg pointed out, there's a lot of variables in these investigations, and if you've not been skilled or trained or experienced in these investigations, you don't understand a lot of these things. Uh, as Don Aaron put out the other day, when we start a missing person investigation, we're looking for a person. We're looking for a body. We're not looking for a small piece of, of evidence. Can we miss some things? Sure. But our primary goal is to find Mr. Strain and bring him home safely. Think of it like a large crime scene. A lot of times you have to deal with the victims first before you can go back and start looking for those precise pieces of evidence, okay? That's kind of our focus here. We're looking for Mr. Strain, then we go back and look again. And because these two ladies over here were kind enough to volunteer their time and helped us by finding that, now we can do a more refined search with our urban search and rescue, which is what they're gonna be doing this afternoon. And as Mr. Flagg said, with a lot of volunteers, if you're coming down to volunteer, understand it is very treacherous terrain. That's why we're using urban search and rescue and not just anyone on the street because our people are trained, they're equipped, they have everything that they need to conduct these searches. There's, you won't even see a patrol officer go to some of these areas that are more treacherous. Why? Because they don't have the repelling equipment and things of that nature. So we're utilizing all the resources we can. We've also going to be reaching out to Office of Emergency Management. They've been helping us quite a bit. Over the weekend, they've been back out with a boat, divers, cadaver dogs. They run sonar, our boat has sonar. It's the same stuff people have asked about TBI. It's the same resources they have. Um, so there's not been a need for us to get additional uh, assistance from these other agencies. However, uh, like Mr. Flag, Cajun Navy, they have that experience. They want to volunteer their time. They've been very gracious in talking with us, saying they're gonna help us out. Not a problem at all. But again, if you have a structured organization like United Cajun Navy, you have the safety protocols in place. You have the equipment and the resources to utilize uh, as, to conduct that search as well as to make certain everybody's safe doing that. Um, we're going to continue to search. We're still filtering all the Crime Stoppers tips, as Detective Chandler said. I cannot stress enough the volume of information we've gotten. Um, we've had people get frustrated with us because they'll call us, say, on a Monday, and they don't know why we haven't gotten back to them on Monday. And I've had to explain to them we have to weigh every piece of evidence we get, or information rather, evenly. We can't just jump to the top because, quite honestly, there's a lot of tips that we're getting that are not tips. They mean well, but they're not tips. So we have to prioritize what's actually providing information. And some of the other things I have my detectives doing today is re-canvassing the area for video. And while we don't think Riley uh, may have been in any of these homeless camps away from this area, those are areas that we're going to be working on this afternoon uh, ourselves. Um, uh, in regards to, we've had questions about some of the uh, behind the scenes things we're doing, search warrants, that kind of thing. Please understand it's an open investigation. We cannot share that information with the public because it's an open investigation. It can, if it were to turn into a criminal investigation, well, obviously now we're negatively impacting that situation. So please understand if you call us and you're asking us questions, there may be some things we cannot answer and it's to maintain the integrity of the investigation as well as any potential evidence, should there be a criminal component to it. Uh, I would also ask, as uh, Mr. Flagg and everybody has, uh, if you have questions for the family, you want to help the family, that's great. But pl please also respect their privacy. Uh, these kinds of incidents uh, that happen, sometimes people with the best of intentions don't know the best way to approach people, and it can cause more stress for the family. So please be mindful of that. Uh, what am I missing? I don't think... Uh, one of the other things I wanted to make sure everybody understood, all the businesses and everybody we have asked for assistance as far as video or any other information, we have had absolute cooperation from everybody involved. There has never been a time to where anyone has had any issue in giving us any other information. To go along with what Mr. Flagg said, I know earlier I said this is not a criminal investigation this time. 
Should we uncover something that would change that, it's important that we go through one centralized source to where we know we can then change the manner in which we're searching and can start to conduct that in the proper manner. So if you do want to volunteer, we welcome all eyes to come help try to find Riley. But if we stumble across something to where we need to change the direction of the investigation, it is important that it's through one coordinated source and they're able to get with the information back to us so we can adjust accordingly. I think the only thing I would like to add before we open up the questions is one of the concerns people have called in multiple times about is that he was, you know, Riley was being chased, he was being followed. We have seen no evidence of that. We've been through the video multiple times. And that is the reason why we released that body camera footage, because that officer had an interaction with him. And we've talked to other people that have indicated to us there was no injuries on Mr. Strain when they observed him. And there was no indication that he was running from anything or he was in fear. Uh, there's been a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misinformation out there, and we're putting out everything we can to dispel all of those misconceptions. We're happy to answer those questions, um, but again, people are taking what, what has already been put out, what the media's put out, and then putting their spin on it, calling back with Crime Stoppers tips that are not actually tips, they're their theory on what happened. We love people calling in and helping us, but we need actionable leads that we can follow up on so please understand too when you don't see us like my detectives out in the field constantly it's because we're trying to prioritize those tips that we're getting to find what's actually useful information that we can follow up on because sometimes we get tips that we can't follow up on it's just a statement somebody's making why are so many dogs suffering from health issues actress katherine heigl who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation says she's seeing more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to improve any dog's health, their food. What she discovered is that the way many dog foods are made can actually create toxins that could be wrecking our dog's health. And this is true even for many premium brands. Fortunately, she found that by adding just a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. She's met a 20 minute video explaining step by step how anyone can do this same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. If you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash MC911 and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B A D L A N D S F O O D dot com slash MC911. What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? These ultra-low-net-carb baked goods contain zero sugar, fewer calories, and more protein than the leading brands, and are high in fiber to support gut health. Shop now at Hero.co. There are thousands of theories floating around the internet and social media platforms like TikTok. Some are sound possibilities, but many I have seen are just seemingly nonsense likely trying to create more views on their channels. While absolutely everyone, including me, wishes Riley to be found safely, there is the unfortunate possibility that somehow he ended up at the river and may have drowned. If this is what happened, a lot of people may know that once someone drowns, after a certain length of time, the body will float back to the surface. There are a lot of factors that contribute to when it would start floating. According to the information compiled by the National Underwater Rescue Recovery Institute, the biggest determining factor is the water temperature. The temperature of the Cumberland River, the body of water that runs through downtown Nashville, has recently been hovering between 54 and 56 degrees. With water temps in that region, a body will generally float somewhere between 10 and 14 days, which is right in the area where we are right now. There are additional factors, though when and what food was last consumed. Foods high in carbohydrates like beer, soft drinks, potato chips, etc. They produce gases faster, which would also increase the time of floating. Alcohol also contributes to this. Body composition is also a big factor. Someone who is skinnier, like Riley is, would not float as fast as someone who is heavy set. Possibly the biggest factor is any debris that might be underwater that could cause entanglement. The Cumberland River is the main watershed for the area. All local rivers and streams flow into it. Because of that, 
Any flooding can sweep entire trees from the bank of the river into the flowing water. If he were to become entangled in one of those trees, chances are less likely that he would float. There is and has been a massive search ongoing for Riley, mainly focusing on the river. Metro Police Department as well as Metro Fire have been out on boats up and down the river. The urban search and rescue team has been doing the same. Drones and the police department's helicopters have also been up searching the river and the banks from the sky. Recently, a group of volunteers known as the Cajun Navy have shown up in force with a lot of additional boats as well as a hovercraft. Search efforts have also stepped up at the next stopping point in the river, the Cheatham Dam, which is located roughly 40 miles away from where Riley was last seen. Efforts to control the flow of the river known as burping have been happening at this dam. This is where they open and close the flow of the dam to try and release anything that's been caught underwater. So far, all searches have come up with nothing. Riley still hasn't been found. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Riley Strain, please call the Metro Police's tip line at 615-742-7463. That's 615-742-7463. I'm not at all asking for anyone to join in on the search. The area where most are looking is very treacherous, and as I've said in previous episodes, we don't want to create more victims. Not only is the area treacherous, but the things that are there are also dangerous. Because of the camps that are down by the river, there are very good chances that you will encounter used needles that were discarded down there. So for right now, my best advice is let the professionals do their job down there. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people down there right now searching the riverbanks and the river itself for Riley. If you have already coordinated with the search groups and are one of the volunteers out on the water or the Cumberland River Bank and find a piece of evidence like the TikTokers with a credit card, or if you find Riley, immediately dial 911. While finding a piece of evidence isn't a life-threatening emergency which would normally be used on 911, it's imperative that a good location is obtained, and on the water or river bank, there are no addresses or cross streets to give. A GPS location of your phone can be used for finding you while dialing 911. Be sure that the GPS function is turned on in your phone. Let's all pray that Riley is found quickly. That's it for this episode. Follow Music City 911 on all social media, but especially on Facebook, the Music City 911 Podcast Succession Group. I'm sure we'll be floating some talk of theories and updates on Riley there in the group. I've also recently stumbled on another group on Facebook called Riley Strain Missing Nashville, Tennessee. It is a very large group that has ballooned up to over 60,000 members. It's worth checking out too. If you're a Patreon member, you should already know that there was a bonus episode released last week. If you're not a member, it's a good time to jump over and check out the extra content. This one also something that happened here in Nashville. Not only did I release that bit of content, I also released a total of 17 911 calls that was related to it, all of them unedited in their entirety. Head over to patreon.com slash musiccity911 for that bonus content and ad-free episodes. For Music City 901, I'm Brandon, and y'all have a good one. Enjoy all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. When you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, and the best daily promotions in the business. And with BetMGM at your fingertips, every play and every game matters more than ever. Remember to use code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't don't win your first bet. Place your money line, prop, 
or parlay bets with the king of sportsbooks today. Bet MGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly. Bet MGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. Iowa only. New customer offer. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. 